Hello! In this video we introduce the configuration file editor for Tillit & Hague Vision Guidance Systems. This tutorial covers inter-row guidance systems examples. However, the same editor with additional parameters is also used to create and edit configuration files for our in-row weeding, thinning and spot spraying systems. Our guidance systems have the flexibility to guide a wide array of different machine geometries relative to a wide range of crop features. For example, our guidance systems accommodate front and rear mounted implements, trailed implements, side shifts, disc steering, multiple independently steered sections, multiple cameras and various combinations of these. Despite that, it is important that to an individual operator the system is simple to use and performs their specific task on their crop with the minimum of fuss. We resolve that conflict through the configuration files that contain preloaded settings matching an individual operator's machine and their crops. All the operator need do is select from a choice of configuration files. We're going to look at how to create and edit those configuration files. Machine operators are not normally expected to edit their own configuration files so this video is aimed primarily at manufacturers and dealers who are setting up machines for their customers. The editor is reached either from the Advanced Settings and Diagnostics page or from the Startup screen. Just touch on the button labelled with a file and pen symbol. Users are required to enter a PIN to prevent accidental entry to the editor. The default is a top secret 1234, though this can be changed using one of the service tools. On entry to the editor, a list of existing configuration files is displayed on the left of the screen, with a vertical array of touch buttons on the right. To select a configuration file, touch on the appropriate line. The text will turn white and it will be prefixed with a small white chevron. Buttons on the right hand side of the screen perform actions on the selected file, create new files or change language settings. To exit the editor, I'll move back up through its levels, touch the loop back button at the bottom right of the screen. The top right button with a file symbol and a plus sign creates a new file from defaults. We do not recommend this method to create new files as your machine may not correspond exactly with the default options requiring several settings to be checked. It is much better to copy an existing file that is known to work on that machine and only alter what is necessary to accommodate specific changes to machine or crop geometry. To do that, select an existing file similar to the one you want to create. Touch on the second button down with the double file symbol. A copy is added to the list and given the name New One. To edit a file, select it and touch the third button down. If you have made a new file, your first edit will probably be to change the file name to something that will be meaningful to the operator. Touch on the default name, New One, and an alphanumeric keyboard will pop up and can be used in the usual way. Many choose a name that incorporates the number of rows to be followed and the row spacing, for example, 5 row 20 centimetres. Alternatively, a purely text name can be entered, such as carrots. The maximum number of characters is 10. Press the return key when you have finished typing. The next line down relates to sections, which are numbered sequentially, starting with zero. The numbers are placed inside square brackets. A section is a frame that can be steered or side shifted. Most systems only have one section, so there is only one entry, a zero. 
The maximum number of independently steered sections you are likely to see is three. To edit a section, touch on the appropriate number. This example is for the most common rear-mounted side shift configuration. It displays four parameters. Width, which is the working width of that section, a figure that is used solely for the purpose of calculating the area worked. Peak travel is its side shift stroke from the center position. So if the mechanical stroke of the slide is 30 centimeters, the side shift stroke from the center position will be half that, less a small margin, say one centimeter, making the peak travel 14 centimeters. Pot scale relates to the scaling between a 4096 bit digital input and the stroke of the position transducer. It is not normally necessary to alter this number unless you are changing the position transducer for one with different characteristics. Finally, the cameras used to guide that section are listed as sequential numbers starting with zero. In this case, there is only one. Press the loop back button to return to the previous page. The last line relates to camera parameters. Cameras are numbered sequentially starting with zero. Again, numbers are placed inside square brackets. Most systems only have one camera, so there is only one entry, zero. To edit camera settings, touch on the appropriate camera number, zero in this case. For each camera, there are five parameters displayed. The first three relate to the camera itself, and the last two relate to the crop being viewed. Height is the distance measured from ground level to the center of the camera lens when the implement is in work. To change it, touch on the number and a numeric keyboard will pop up, allowing you to enter a revised number. If you are not sure about anything at any point in the editor, touch on the red question mark key. This gives helpful context sensitive hints and in this case gives a diagram explaining how some of the camera parameters are measured. These include look ahead and distance ahead of cultivators, which are the next two parameters to be entered. As the diagram shows, to measure look ahead you need to mark on the ground the centre of the camera's field of view. This point can be identified from the working screen in manual mode when purple crosshairs superimposed over the live video image point to the center. This is explained further in our tutorial on setting up cameras. It is desirable for camera height and look ahead to be measured accurately as they are used to create the electronic template that should match real crop rows as viewed in the image. The better that match, the more accurate and more robust the tracking. Distance ahead of cultivators need only be measured approximately for inter-row machines. Rows is the number of rows you wish to track. Row spacing is the distance between those rows. This is normally single figure, but the manual gives information on how to configure for uneven row spacings. Under normal circumstances, the editor settings we have just covered are all you will need to add new crops or make changes to camera position. However, the editor does have an advanced version, reached by touching the Spanner++ plus plus button, that allows you to edit a wider range of parameters. These are covered in the manual, so we will not run through them all now. but. By way of an example, we will look at a couple of the more common reasons for needing advanced settings. They are adding a second camera to a single section machine and enabling crop color choice. Physically adding a second camera is very easy. Simply plug it into the second camera socket on the implement module. We then need to edit the configuration to use it. This time, 
when we enter the configuration file editor, we touch on the spanner plus plus symbol and select advanced from the pop-up box. The second line now gives the number of cameras fitted on the machine. If we want to add a second camera, we touch on the one and change it to a two. You will notice that further down the screen against the line edit cameras, there are now two cameras, naught and one. If we leave it like that and go back to the working screen, we can see both cameras. The first is tracking rows as it was before but the second camera, whilst giving a live video, is not tracking any rows. This can actually be useful as it allows that camera to be used for surveillance purposes, looking at cultivators for example. However, normally we do want the second camera to help with guidance. So going back to the configuration editor with advanced features selected, we touch on edit section and add that second camera to the list of cameras mounted on that section and therefore used for guidance purposes. Go back to the working screen. Both cameras are now tracking rows as normal. The second camera is a copy of the first. So if your newly added camera is set up exactly the same as the first, you need do nothing more and the system is now configured to run with both cameras. If your second camera is not set up the same as the first, you can edit that camera independently as described earlier. If you have multiple configuration files and you want to use both cameras in those configurations as well, you will have to edit each in the same way. Now to our second example, enabling crop color choice. Reselect the advanced version and touch on the optional features. On the first line, offer crop color choice, change the N, meaning no, to a Y, meaning yes. This then adds some new color choices, which can be changed in the same way. If you're simply wanting to have the option to run on red or largely red crops, for example, red lettuce, but do not want the operator to use custom colour, make sure the allow custom colour line is marked N. If you do want the operator to be offered custom colour, ensure that the line is marked Y. Experience has shown custom colour is most likely to be helpful in allium and brassica crops with a very slight blue hue. Even in these crops, it is only necessary to bias the crop colour very slightly to the blue to get an improved contrast with the background. With custom colour selected, you get the choice of entering a fixed value, for example a figure of 30 gives a slight bias to the blue, or enabling a graphical custom colour adjustment tool, which you can enable from the colour choice line on the setup screen. Once enabled, the tool is available in the Advanced Settings and Diagnostics page. Use the arrow keys to slide the adjustment bar. You can tell if any sort of colour option is enabled as a plant icon appears on the working screen whose colour reflects the selected crop colour choice. With the few exceptions already mentioned, moving away from the default green that has been carefully chosen to maximise crop to background contrast, has much more scope to reduce performance than to increase it. We therefore strongly suggest custom colour is not enabled unless working in unusually coloured crops with an operator that is well trained in how and when to use it. Now, just to finish up, there are a couple more touch buttons on the right hand side to explain. The delete button is provided to remove unwanted configuration files. Finally, the flag button below provides an opportunity to change user screen language. Press on the flag whose language you require. 
The configuration editor itself is currently only available in English, so you will only see the change when you return to the user screens. By early 2020, we will have a multilingual configuration file editor. However, it may take a little longer to obtain translations. If you would like to provide new translations or improve on existing ones, please ask us for a translation table. We will enter your new translation and return it to you as an update. We hope you found this video useful and remember to look out for our other tutorials. If you have ideas on how we can improve our tutorials or indeed our products, please let us know. Thanks for watching.